Hey guys, the objective of this video is to find the length of the minimum hogging bars. So in the previous video, we found the length of the minimum, uh, the maximum hogging bars. Now we're up to finding the length of the minimum hogging bars. So it's quite simple. All we need to do is just ensure that the minimum hogging bars are going to be going between these two bars. So if we look at our moment envelope, we've now found bars for this, for this and this. We now need to be looking at bars through here. So this is going like sort of through mid span now. So these are at the support and this is at mid span. So all we do is we draw in the bar, which is gonna look something like that and like that and like that. But the code says we need to now splice them. So splicing means we extend the length either side to ensure that the um, force from this bar can be transferred into that bar. So we're going to be extending our bars from this interface where they um, where they sort of meet a little bit further in and a little bit further in. Okay, so we could find just the length of that bar just straight from the diagram. We'll do that later. It's very easy. But the thing we need to find from the code is this this splice length. So this additional length from there to there. Okay, so that's the splice length. Now. We do that by looking at section 13.2.2 of the code. All right, so we're looking at 13.2.2. If I get that section for you, section 13.2.2. So we have lap splices for bars in tension. Okay, here's the formula lsy.t.lap is k7 times lsy.t, which is greater than 29k1 db. Okay, so I've just rewritten it here. Uh, lsy.t and lsy.tb are the same thing. That's just taken from the previous clause. So that is from 13.1.2.2 is lsy.tb, where it says, says the development length lsy.t shall be taken as the basic length um, to form by intention lsy.tb. Okay, so it's the same thing. So we're going to go and work this out. 